boys and girls, from me, Henry, and Nipper. Now, don't forget, if you like tonight's video, hit the like button, press the subscribe, and ring the bell. By doing so, you will be the first to be notified when me, Henry, brings out my latest video. And remember, it costs you nothing to subscribe. Now, before we start tonight's story, are we snuggled in? Then we shall begin. Tonight's story is called Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Once upon a time in a large forest, close to a village, stood the cottage where the teddy bear family lived. They were not really proper teddy bears, for Father Bear was very big. Mother Bear was middling in size, and the only baby bear could be described as a teddy bear. Each bear had its own size of bed. Father Bear's was large and nice and comfy. Mother Bear's was middling in size whilst Baby Bear had a fine little cherry wood bed that Father Bear had ordered from a couple of beaver friends. Beside the fireplace around which the family sat in the evening stood a large carved chair for the head of the house, a delightful blue velvet armchair for Mother and a very little chair for Baby Bear. Neatly laid out on the kitchen table stood three china bowls, a large one for Father Bear, a smaller one for Mother Bear, and a little bowl for Baby Bear. The neighbours were all very respectful to Father Bear, and people usually raised their hats when he went by. Father Bear liked that, and he always politely replied to their greetings. Mother Bear had lots of friends. She visited them in the afternoons to exchange good advice and recipes for jam and bottled fruit. Baby Bear, however, had hardly any friends. This was partially because he was rather a bully and liked to win games and arguments. He was a pest too and always getting into mischief. Not far away lived a fair-haired little girl who had a similar nature to Baby Bear, only she was haughty and stuck up as well. And though Baby Bear often asked her to come and play at his house, she always said no. One day when Mother Bear made a nice pudding, it was a new recipe with blueberries and other crispberries. Her friends told her it was delicious. When it was ready, she said to the family, It has to be left to cool now, otherwise it won't taste nice. That will take at least an hour. Why don't we go and visit the beaver's new baby? Mummy Beaver would be pleased to see us, Father Bear. And Baby Bear would much rather have tucked into the pudding warm or not. They liked the thought of visiting the new baby. We must wear our best clothes, even for such a short visit. Everyone at the beavers will be very busy and must not stay too long now. And so they set off along the footpath towards the river bank. A short time later, they struck upon a little girl whose name was Goldilocks. Passed by the bear's house as she picked flowers. Ooh, what an ugly house the bears have, said Goldilocks to herself as she went down the hill. I'm going to peep inside. It won't be beautiful like my house, but I'm dying to see where Baby Bear lives. Knock, knock. The little girl tapped on the door. Knock, knock. Not a sound came from within. Surely someone will hear me knocking, Goldilocks said to herself impatiently. Is there anyone at home, she called, peering round the door. 
Then she went into the empty house and started to explore the kitchen. A pudding, she cried, dipping her fingers into the pudding. Mother Bear had left to cool. Oh, that's quite nice, she murmured, spooning it from the baby's bowl. In a twinkling, the bowl lay empty on a messy table with a full tummy. Goldilocks went on exploring. Now then, this must be Father Bear's chair. This will be Mother Bear's, and this one must belong to my friend Baby Bear. I'll just sit on it a while. With these words, Goldilocks sat down onto the little chair, which, quite unused to such a sudden weight, promptly broke a leg. Goldilocks crashed to the floor, but not in the least dismayed by the damage she had done, she went upstairs. There was no mistake in which was Baby Bear's bed. Mmm, quite comfy, she said. I'm bouncing on it. Not as nice as mine, but nearly. She then started to yawn. I think I lie down only for a minute just to try the bed. And the next to no time, Goldilocks lay fast asleep in Baby Bear's bed. In the meantime, the bears were on their way back home. Oh, wasn't the new baby beaver ever so small, said Baby Bear to his mother. Was I as tiny as that when I was born? Not quite, but almost came the reply with a fond caress from a distance. Father Bear noticed the door was ajar. Hurry, he cried. Someone's in our house. Was Father Bear hungry, or did a thought strike him? Anyway, he dashed into the kitchen. I knew it! Somebody has gobbled up the pudding. Someone has been jumping up and down on my armchair, complained Mother Bear. And somebody's broken my chair, wailed Baby Bear. Where could the culprit be? They all ran upstairs and tiptoed in amazement over the Baby Bear's bed. In it lay Goldilocks, sound asleep. Baby Bear prodded her toe. Who's that? Where am I? shrieked the little girl, waking with a startle. Taking fright at the scowling faces bending over her, she clutched the bed clothes up to her chin. Then she jumped out of the bed and fled down the stairs. Get away from that house, she told herself, and she ran, forgetful of all the trouble she had caused. But Baby Bear called from the door, waving his arms. Don't run away, come back. I forgive you. Come and play with me. And this is how it all ended. From that day onwards, haughty Lou Goldilocks became a pleasant little girl. She made friends with Baby Bear and often went to his house. She invited him to a house too, and they remained good friends forever. Well, children, wasn't that a nice story? So, nighty-night children, nighty-night children, nighty-night.